Okay, so going a little further with the debate I had with uh, Mr. Holy Kool-Aid. Now, I was reading the comments of the debate, and somebody, somebody in the comment section said, it seems like the only Enlightenment philosopher that Craig knows or talks about is Rousseau. <laughs> now, it's not the only Enlightenment philosopher I know. It's probably the only one I brought up in the context of that debate. Sure. Why? Because it's really, really important in, in light of what we were debating. Remember, we were debating whether religion is a positive or a ne negative influence on society as a whole. Now, why is Rousseau so important to that argument? Because with Rousseau, you have a new idea that man is innately good. Now, I'm not sure if the idea has absolutely had its origins in Rousseau. But it was first popularized by Rousseau and first brought into Western civilization, entered into the philosophical discourse by Rousseau. Man is innately good. Now, that's in direct contradiction to the philosophical underpinnings of the Bible. Philosophical underpinnings of the, of the, of the scripture is that man is given over to corruption, innately sinful, given over to corruption and in need of a savior. Now, there are distortions in that. That's just its most basic form. There are distorted ways of, of, of that. There are ways of distorting that essential premise. But that's the essential philosophical underpinning of the premise. That man is given over to corruption, innately sinful, and in need of a savior. Rousseau said man is innately good. That's very important to the entire premise of what we were discussing. Why? Because... He, one of his, the philosophical underpinnings, the hidden philosophical underpinning of his entire argument, the scaffolding on which it stands, and if you remove that, the entire thing collapses, is the moral perfectibility of man. His argument was that science and reason, or the, or the secular argument is that science and reason alone, and those type of, those type of progressive forces can bring about a perfect society. The entire scaffolding on which that argument rests is the moral perfectibility of man. If man is not morally perfectible, then it doesn't matter. We can get as scientifically great as we want. It is forever tethered to human nature. And if man isn't morally perfectible, then science and reason alone are never going to save us. Ain't never That savior ain't never going to come. Unlike the savior of the Bible, that one ain't coming. Why? Because, because science and reason are forever tethered to human nature. And if we are not morally perfectible, we are not going to create a prefer perfect society, no matter how scientifically adept we get, how brilliant we get with our, with our science or our philosophy or any of it. The argument of the Bible is man is inherently corruptible, corrupt and corruptible, given over to corruption in our earthly natures. Now, who's right? To me, this is axiomatic, no brainer, doesn't need to be argued. To me, to pick a century, any century, the idea that man is perfectible of his own accord to me is so obviously nonsensical and so obviously not so. Remember, I said this in the debate, I'll say this again. This is something to really think about. The Nazi scientists were every bit as good as the American scientists. But they use science in service of evil things. Science in and of itself is morally neutral. It's a tool. Doesn't matter how scientifically adept somebody gets. If, the, if it's tethered to an evil human being, science will produce evil, period. It is a tool in the hand of the human being. It is in and of itself morally neither good nor bad. Ditto for reason. I'm relatively certain Nazi scientists could reason pretty clearly. They could add. <laughs> they could reason pretty clearly, too. This is why, to me, I mean, one of the underlying premises as far as the argument on my side is, to me, axiomatic. It's completely and utterly obvious. And you don't need to look too far to see that truth. The human nature... That, that's, that's the, that's the essential, the essential argument right there. It is, is man inherently sinful and in need of a savior? Or are human beings of their own accord without any outside force able to, to find moral perfection?
to achieve moral perfection. To me, that's obviously not so. And I tried to bring up George Bernard Shaw. Because some of your more far-thinking philosophers who were arguing in favor of secularism recognize this. That's why Nietzsche had the concept of a superman. This is why George Bernard Shaw started arguing with him. The religious teachings of George Bernard Shaw, you can go look him up. He starts arguing about that man is morally perfectible. Because if man is not, what difference does it make how scientifically adept he will get? Now, to me, again, the argument on my side, axiomatic, no-brainer, as plain as day. If you have lived life at all, and you, if you have lived your life at all, and if you have read history even a little, and you think that man is morally perfectible of his own accord, you know, I just fundamentally completely disagree with you. That is so obviously not so. I don't, I don't even know, I don't even know that it needs to be, to be debated. So... That is all on that point.